know that I've burnt my spices. Oh no, what, what have I gotten myself into? Like, you know, would I be able to finish this? So at this point, it has failed four times. It's really gutting me up that it's not working. And I'm thinking I'm completely prepared to give it up. Hi, Aaron. How's your lap chiong doing? Oh, man. Chef, it's not happening, man. It's not happening? It's supposed to be a crispy, almost like a twill. It's smelling right. Yes, thank you, yeah. Chef. Now, this guy does have to work, man. It's the last one I have. Take the oil out, seriously. Yeah, okay. Just take the oil out. Turn the heat very, very quickly up. OK, just flip it. Keep on flipping it. Uh, I'm just going to turn the heat up. Yeah, and flip it, yeah? Mm. OK. Thank you, Chef. Good luck. All right, guys. you got two minutes. Two minutes to finish up. You eat with your senses, your taste bud, your eyes. So I'm trying to dolly it up a bit. All right, guys, your final 10 seconds. 10, 9, nine 8, eight seven, 7, 6, 6 5, five. Four, three, two, one. Time's up, hands up. Step away from your benches. Good job. Well done, guys, well done. Congratulations, guys. You've just cooked dishes that let us share in the connection you have with those people in the photos. So today, we're only going to taste the six dishes that are the hits and the misses. So when I call your name, please bring your dish forward. Diana, is this for real? They're calling out my name? I'm so over the moon. This is your moment. Let them fall in love with it. Just enjoy the dish I'm presenting to you right now. Today, I've made what I call a bai chicken, and you're going to have that with the butter naan. Are you, are you comfortable with your naan? I wanted to present something better to you, actually. Nonetheless, it looks pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we dig in, guys? Yes. Yes. Okay. One. Yep. Sorry, it, 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 it's horrible. I really hate it. I've got to try it one more time. I'm not very sure about the taste. <laughs> oh, man, it's... It's really, really good. I love it. The naan is great. For that short amount of time, you've been able to bring in so much flavour. You've used your spices really well. It's got a good amount of heat. You know, it's sweetness. Thank you. Thank you. Notice I had nothing to say. <laughs> Thank you very much. Glad that you enjoy it. The next dish we'd like to taste belongs to Jen. I'm quite worried about my dish as I felt that it wasn't perfect. So I've made a Hainanese soy sauce chicken rice today. Is this close to what mum and dad would expect of you? It wasn't up to my dad's standard. That's Ooh. of course. But I tried to em emulate the same flavour using what is in the pantry. All right, shall Can we? we? Taste? Yep. Why were you so afraid to use fat? Because um, you can't taste any fat in the rice. Oh, okay. That's what makes chicken rice, rendering so, of chicken fats. To her credit, the chicken was done perfectly. You know, all the nuances of the spices, the aromatics, they were all were there. Yeah. You got the chicken right. Mm -hmm. The chilli's there. The rice is not there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. The next dish we would like to taste belongs to Somia. <laughs> Tell us about the dish. Uh, so what I've actually made is a Turkish egg served on hung curd and coriander and coconut chutney and uh, served it with a paratha. Turkish Indian fusion. I've also uh, garnished it with sumac. I primarily um, used it also as a salting in ingredient instead of just using traditional salt. I felt like the whole thing came together pretty well, but I think you could have re reduced the reliance on sumac and, and actually put more salt into your chutney. 
You know, apart from the salt and maybe the egg. If you wanted a soft boiled egg, that would have made it all really nice and creamy. Um, those elements, if you did it right, this would have been a superb dish. Thank you so much. Thank you. Not having salt is something that is not forgivable. So I'm going to be going forward very, very careful about that. The next dish we'd like to taste belongs to Sharon. I'm feeling a bit emotional because when they eat the dish, they will feel the love that my mom would have cooked for, for me when I was young. Sharon, what have you made for us today? Uh, today I made coconut with pineapple curry with fragrant herb rice. So is this something mom cooked before? The rice is my own twist, but the curry is my mom's. Okay. I cannot wait. <laughs> Sorry guys, I cannot wait. I'm going for it. <laughs> Let's eat it with our hands. Mm. This is going to be a first of Master Chef, right? No, look at you guys eating it, enjoying it. I think my mom will be very, very happy. For a stewed dish, it usually takes a very long time to get a round flavour and I'm very surprised and proud of you for having achieved that in a short time. I think that in itself, I would sit there and eat that all day long because you've got so much little pops coming from, from every ingredient in there, the laksa leaf, the dried shrimp. Speechless? <laughs> Thank you so much. It's beautiful cooking and I think you channel mom to the tea today. Thank you so much. Thanks for feeding us well. The next person we like to call is Vidya. What have you got for us here, Vidya? Um, so I have a very traditional Indian lunch that my grandmother would cook for us. Um, it's a mutton meatball curry with cabbage stew and carrot with coconut uh, that has been sautéed. I use a lot of spices in my cooking. My dad's Indian. The one thing people get wrong most of the time is they temper their spices wrongly. Mm. There's a certain bitterness that comes from burning your spices, and then it penetrates the entire dish. You know, it's such a shame because that mutton meatball, it's divine. But the sauce, it's bitter. All you taste is the burnt spices. Thank you, Vijaya. Thank you. I'm going out. I'm going home today. It was a big mistake. I have to face the consequences. I should have restarted it. I didn't. Last of all, we'd like to taste the dish by Aaron. I'm kind of freaking out a little bit because I'm not so sure if they are going to like my taste, you know. And uh, it's quite scary. I've made for you a uh, very humble luro fan, which is basically just a braised pork belly with a uh, sous vide egg and a um, lap chong, I would call it. I wanted to make it into a twill, but it didn't really work out, so it's like a biscuit now. And yeah, that was one of the things. Mm. It's okay. We'll taste, yeah, shall we, taste gentlemen? It. Yeah. All right. I heard that. This brings me back. Thank you, sir. The egg is a really clever finish. That pork, so controlled, so balanced with your flavours. It's a brilliant dish, dude. I can't fault wow. it. Thank you. I Thank love you. it. Thank you. I think this is really Aaron at his best because you showed us something new with the lap chong cracker, which we all think is like crispy bakwa. Yeah. And I, I think that's so inspired. It is. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Aaron.